Hey everyone, it's the DJ Dr. San Diego, and I uh, hope you're having an awesome week. So today we're going to be talking about cue points, but before we get to that, I wanted to show you this picture of an airplane cockpit. And I wanted to, you know, kind of remind myself that to some of you beginning DJs, um, looking at a DJ setup, whether it be a mixer or a controller, can be a bit overwhelming with all these buttons and you have no clue what they're doing. So, you know, I'm always conscious of that and I want to make sure that when I'm teaching people how to DJ that, you know, I'm doing it on a very basic level so that they truly understand, um, you know, how to DJ. To those students who are feeling um, a bit overwhelmed this week, stick with it. You know, just like anything else, the more you practice it, the more you learn about it, the more you read about it, the better you get. So uh, stick with it. Hey everyone, so today we're talking about cue points and uh, what cue points are, are they're essentially shortcuts to a specific part of the song. So if we look at a song kind of like a book, um, cue points would be like bookmarks. So a way to get to a specific part of the song or a specific part of the book very quickly. Now these uh, bookmarks or cue points can be color coded and they can be renamed so that you uh, are better able to incorporate them into your DJ set. So um, before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, I've loaded a song and uh, let's go ahead and take a listen to it. And uh, I want to kind of go over um, beat gridding one more time just so that you understand that prior to us going into cue points. So if we load a song and we play it. All right, so I'm going to stop it there because, um, as you can see, it had started the B grid at the very beginning of the song. So if we go to the very beginning of the song, it started the B grid right at this kind of little intro section. All right, so that section of the song is not where I want to start the B grid. I want the B grid to start at the first um, point that the beat drops. So let me go ahead and play the song again. So that beat right here is where I want to set the first beat grid, and that's the first downbeat. So let's go ahead and go to the top left, hit edit beat grid. We're gonna hit clear. So it's gonna take out the beat grid, and then we're gonna hit set, and it's gonna set the beat grid right where I want it to. And if I uh, shortcut to hidden set, you can hit X also. So if I clear and I hit X on my keyboard, it sets it there. Now, when, once you've done that, don't forget to hit save. So let's go ahead and hit save. And then at the first downbeat, or the first um, where I start my um, B grid, I set my first cue point. Cue points are in this section here, top left side, and you can just hit the plus, and you can go ahead and uh, um, set it that way. And so now, if I trigger that cue point, it's always gonna get me there. Now, if I, on my controller, hold down the um, cue point, it'll play, for the duration that I'm holding down that button. So I, and when I let go, it goes back to the beginning. So I can use it like a drum or I can hold it down and check it that way, okay? So we also have the option to um, rename. I can go ahead and double click this section and I can write intro and then It'll be saved. So now I know when I hit this red cue point, it's um, the intro part of the song, so which is going to be very helpful. All right, so now that I've set that cue point, let me go ahead and push play and see if the beat grid is correct. So we can see that 
the B grid is not correct because it should be right here and it's up here. And uh, a lot of my new students actually struggle with this because um, they're used to using electronic music that has a drum machine. So the reason why this beat grid is not correct is because real drums were used to make this song. So um, what you can do is go back to your first cue point. First of all, we want to hit edit beat grid and play the song. All right, so we see that this one is a bit off. So let's go ahead and hit X and set that. Go ahead and play our song. All right, so the next downbeat is a little off also. Let's go ahead and push X, play our song. All right, and as we saw here, that one was, was pretty good. So let's continue to play. All right, so you saw at the end of the fourth downbeat, the song started, um, and that's pretty typical. All right, so now as we continue to play the song, we're gonna check to see um, the beat grid and uh, how it deviates from those um, beat grid markers. So go ahead and push play. All right, so here you can see that this was supposed to be the next um, downbeat and it was a bit off also. So, um, you know, I generally do just the intro part of the song, make sure that the intro section of the song is uh, be created correctly or adjusted correctly so that, you know, I just want to incorporate these um, songs that were made with real drums into my DJ set. And, uh, um, you know, I don't want to quantize them or kind of make them too electronic because they do lose a bit of the uh, funkiness to them. So um, anyway, I try whenever possible to use you know songs that other DJs aren't playing, and uh, this is one way that you can do it is you know B grid older music and kind of set it to where it's mixable. All right, so now we've loaded another song, and the song has already been um, B gridded, but I wanted to show you that. Um, this line here is kind of like a terminal line where anything on this side of the line is playing and this side of the line is approaching to get played. So if I go ahead and push play, I realize that if I am moving the platter back and forth here, it is not being played, but once it's crossed that line, then it's played. So you see people kind of um, scratching into a song or bringing that bass, the downbeat in. You can see that it's crossed over that line. All right, so now what we can do is kind of go back over and get as close to that line as possible and set our cue points. Now we hit this plus button but we can also hit, hit, hit it on the controller itself uh, on an empty section of the cue point pads and it'll load um, that cue point. So if we wanna go ahead and add that cue point and then we'll go ahead and add another cue point there and move it forward, get as close to the line as possible, hit another cue point there. So now, you know, if you wanted to kind of um, use it as a drum pad, you can. So, so just kind of do a little something different. Um, if you have a song playing on the other side and it's got like an acapella or something or kind of a break and there's you know, no beat behind it, you can kind of add your own beat and, you know, do something a little different than what everyone else is doing. All right, so now we've loaded this song and we can see that we've already set the, the cue point at, at the beginning of the song. So those individuals who are into uh, beat juggling are gonna really appreciate 
um, cue points because it gets you to the song a lot, to the beginning of the song a lot faster. So if we hit play, before, if we wanted to get back to that beginning of the song, we would reverse the record. And it would take us back, but we would have to, you know, rewind that record. So um, now I can hit my cue point. get there a lot faster rather than <laughs> reversing it um, I can just hit that cue point and you know if I wanted a beat juggle and <laughs> scratch into that next song then I could so. All right, so now we've loaded this song and we can see that there are, in this top left section, there are eight cue points set. And those eight cue points and their colors correspond with the colors on our controller pad. And I'll show you that right now. All right, so now what we can do if we want to get a little more creative with the song we know that if we hold down the cue point, it'll play for the duration that I hold that button down. So if I, you know, essentially, if I were to hold that button down for two minutes and 52 seconds, then I would, you know, play the entire song. But uh, if I just want to hold it down for a bit, all right, so as you can see, um, we can hold it down for as long as we want and then kind of make our own song or set a bunch of cue points and so kind of sounds a little familiar right so um, it's one way that you can kind of um, learn um, ways to be more creative and different from whatever else is doing so So just a different way for you to think outside of the box, you know, get more creative, be different from what everyone else is doing, take it to the next level and go from there. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to show you with cue points is uh, you've got this cue point set at the beginning of the song. All right, and if you do uh, mobile DJ gigs and you are, um, you know, maybe make an announcement, the birthday girl is coming out, or uh, for the first time as husband and wife, um, you might need to make those kind of announcements, and they generally want you to play a song for them to come out to. So let's just kind of um, play the song and uh, um, <clears throat> kind of go from there. So if I were to say, you know, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the birthday girl, Miss Jane Doe, and everyone cheers, and uh, we're kind of waiting for the song to drop, but it's taken a long time, and everyone's just waiting for that song, for the break, and it's taken a long time. So the better way to do is to set that cue point at the beginning of where 
you would want um, everyone to start cheering. And, you know, the beginning part of the song, essentially, where the song really takes off. So um, let's go ahead and play that one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Jane Doe. Do something like that. So it gets to that part of the song quicker um, and doesn't have everyone kind of waiting around for that um, specific part of the song. So, and again, you can double click this and, uh, um, you know, kind of write um, intro and then over here you can write, you know, whatever it is that you want. So, um, you know, some people teach that you should, you know, set cue points at the intro, the vocal or the verse, the break, the chorus, the bridge. Um, you know, I would say use cue points however you see fit. Um, you can even just use a cue point as a reminder as to where you want to mix out of a song and, and write that in that section. You know, if you want to double click and you can put mix out. Okay, so I hope you learned something today as far as cue points are concerned and how to incorporate them into your DJ set, how to set them, how to rename them. And uh, um, yeah, I hope that So the next video that I'm gonna make is gonna be um, transitioning from Scratch Live turntables to Serato DJ, either CDJ or controller, and just kind of helping people out that are making that transition and um, certain mistakes that, you know, a lot of people make for the first time. So look out for that video. Should be uh, done next week sometime. Thanks. Telling me this and telling me that You say once you take me with you I never